Okay, so our next guest speaker is Priya Agarwal. So um, Priya Agarwal is a MTech cybersecurity first year student in IGDTW, New Delhi. After three years in designing, she started her journey in designing in lockdown, which was a turning point for her career, and which was a um, in why which she did by participating in an online competition in her BTech graduation. She has worked in different domains of designing. Currently, she is working as a UI UX designer for UV Robots, a company which is based in London. She has worked in various sectors such as e-commerce, education, and robotics. She has also worked as a graphic designer at Half Cute, a company based in Bangalore. She is a freelancer of UI UX design and has now started building interest in cybersecurity as well. So I now invite Ms. Priya to start with her session. And I thank you, Ms. Priya, for taking her time for us and sharing her knowledge with all of us. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Eva, for inviting me. And thank you, sir and ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. So today, I'm going to talk about UI UX design and what, uh, how you can pursue your career in UI UX design. So I would like to share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, please. you may continue. So I would like to ask my like viewers and everyone who is present here, what do you see in this picture? Like I want to make this session very interactive. So if you could just comment down and tell me what exactly do you understand by this picture? So you can write in a chat so we can read about for you. Yes we can like you can just tell me what do you exactly understand by this picture anyone so eva says it's a 3d something 3d picture okay so no it's not a 3d picture so i'm going to explain you what ui ux is UI is user interface and UX is user experience. So what happens, like what you see in this picture, UI is basically the visual representation of how an object or anything is looking like, how it looks like. Now this is a ketchup bottle and this is also a ketchup bottle. But what do you think if you are a customer, you are going to prefer the first bottle or the second bottle? Anyone? Yeah, I think people will go with the second bottle. Yes, they will. And any reasons for that? Yeah, I can answer. Let's see if somebody wants to answer or I can go for that. Okay. Yeah, so, so I think more, more about the usability wise that, you know, the second bottle is more easy to grab, more easy to place. And yeah, it looks bigger. And so yes. it looks like people will, yeah. So I'm going to show you one another picture and everything will get clear. So you see this? If I am the user and I'm using the first bottle, I have to, you know, sometimes it might be possible I get a lot of ketchup into my hot dog or sometimes a very less and I'm taking a lot of time. But when I'm using the second bottle, I'm you like my experience of using that particular product is much, much better than the experience of my first product. Like the amount of ketchup that I required is apt in the second picture. So if I am happy with the experience that I'm gaining with the second bottle, I'm going to use that product again and again. And if I'm not happy, I'm not going to opt for that product again. So the difference between main difference between UI and UX is same. UI is basically the interaction between the applications and the website. How easily a user gets through the target. Like if you want, like for example, if you have Instagram. Now, if I'm a new user, how easily will I be able to post a picture and how long will I take? Is the interface really good for me to, you know, post a picture or I am not able to understand? So this is the basic difference between UI design and UX design. So I'm going to give you some live, like I'm going to make a proper UI for you so that I, you will get a proper experience of how to 
work on UI UX and if you want to opt your career in UI UX. So for this uh, session, I'm using Figma. Figma is an online tool for UI designs. And people nowadays are usually shifting towards UI design because it's saving a lot of time for company and also the development cost. What used to happen was that the developer used to code the whole application and just because of some few changes, he had to rewrite the whole code. To, to save that development cost and to save that particular time, the UI UX came in that you will design the whole application. The person whose application this is, he's going to view the whole application. If any changes, is, uh, if any changes are there, he's going to do all the changes in the particular design and then it will go for development. By doing this, we are going to save a lot of time. And also, the, whatever the user is, like user is actually testing the designs that we have made. So this is how the whole process will be working. So we have three things in our UI design. First is the wireframing. Second is prototyping. Uh, sorry, first is wireframing, second is high fidelity, and third is prototyping. And then you can test with the user. So this is the interface in which you are going to design. From like this icon, all these are the cardboards. Now, if you want to make for a phone, or you want to make for a tablet, or a desktop, you can choose any one of them. If I choose a desktop, I get this platform, and anything, any design that I'm going to do, will be in this platform only. And like right now, we are going to make a design for a, like a web, uh, sorry, the phone application. So I'm going to choose any one of these. So let's say iPhone 11 Pro Max, which are 414 into 896 pixels. So I've got this cardboard. Now, all these are the tools like you have a rectangle, you have a line, you have an arrow, and a lot you can even place images. So first we are going to do a simple wireframe of two pages, and then we are going to convert it into a high fidelity. And then we are going to do a prototyping, what your users are actually going to feel when that particular design will be turned into a proper application, which is available in your app and Play Stores. So I'm going to grab this rectangle tool, and let's start with placing a box that, okay, this is my image, and I want a nav bar that when a person is coming in my particular design. So in phone, you don't have like a lot of uh, like space to you know adjust everything. So we are we have this nav bar. So if you are going to click on that, now you see these reds, red mark. All this means that you are going to align it in the same alignment. Like it shouldn't be you have like a more of towards the red, like towards left or towards right. So this is my nav bar. I'm going to place an image here. I'm going to create a button so that if a user is coming into my profile, he's going to click on that button and he can redirect himself to another page. So here I create a button. Now I want my button to have a bit of a roundness so all these are the design like you want to do any changes you want to do any color changes everything will be done with the right panel so if i want to give my c i've given a proper dimension to my button i'm going to place it here let's add some text Now we have this and we are going to adjust the font size. Now always buttons are not always empty. So there's always a text. You go to any button, there's always a text. So let's just take with that this is the home screen. And when you'll click on the next, you are going to go to the second page. Let's just copy the first page because our nav bar is going to be same. And to copy, all you have to press is Shift and Alt. 
in your keyboard. Now here I'll just shorten the image. I'll add a little more text about the details of the particular program. And then we can just remove this button. And also we can, you know, we can just add one paragraph here. And to like usually in prototype, when you are doing a wireframing, all you take is lorem ipsum text. So you can just directly go to Google and type lorem ipsum. All this is a dummy text. So you are, they are not going to get like you're not going to get paid and it's not illegal to take such dummy text. I'm just going to copy. Paste. One second. Actually, the text is, I don't know, it's not coming. We're going to select the whole text and we are going to decrease the font size. The minimum font size that we use in a phone application is basically 12 pixels. So the 12 pixel is the minimum. And if you go below that, then you'll have a problem because the user is not like the user will not be able to read that particular text. So you have to keep in mind the text font size and everything that what kind of font you are using. Is it visible to the users or not? So all this comes into designing. You have to keep everything in mind. Now we are going to copy this button. And for example, we say now he has to buy this particular product. If you go to any company, they're not going to directly start with coding. They are going to first create a particular design. And after that, they are going to put that framing into coding. So this is called a wireframing. In wireframing, it's a gray, white, and black thing. Now, this wireframing will be turned into a high fidelity design. A high fidelity design has proper text, proper colors, and proper pictures. So we are going to copy all of this. You're not, you're like, we don't do high fidelity in wireframing itself. You always do a copy, and then we work on it. Now. We have a, like Figma provides a lot of plugins, so you don't have to like you know go to some different uh, browser and search for an image. You can directly search for plugins here, and you can go, you can browse the plugins. Like I already have like few of my favorite plugins. So like FreePic is one of the top most platforms for taking free pictures. So let's say that we are selling pets. So I'll take this image. And you have to just click on the particular object where you want to place your image and then click on the picture. It will directly adjust itself. It's all responsive. You don't have to do a lot of things. Now I want my navbar to be a little good for the users to understand that, yes, it is a navbar. I'll change the color. I'll increase the stroke size. And I'm going to adjust it in the like same distance. A navbar and our image, the front is ready. Now I want my button color to be changed. So I'm going to change it to, this is my eyedropper tool and I want the same color, which is in the background of my dog. So I'm going to pick this eyedrop color and I'm going to drag it to the picture and click on it. See, my background color is same as, like you can just choose, like mostly what companies do, they go for their logo brand colors. So this is the high fidelity design. Same I'm going to do with the second screen. I'm going to select the rectangle. I'll go into my plugin, select whichever plugin you want. Then again, you can choose any picture. I'll search for dog. 
let's take this we have a uh, one more picture and now like i'm going to copy the same nav bar because we have to keep a consistency in our design because if there's no consistency the design is not good so you have to keep in mind that everything is same and aligned in a particular position now all this is my content i'm going to make this button color same as the previous one because again we have to go with the consistency and since we have kept next as white color we are going to convert this by also as white color so now this is our high fidelity design you see the difference between the wireframing and high fidelity wireframing just gives you a basic outlook of how your application or a web page will look like and high fidelity gives you a proper response at what your users are going to look if you code this particular design and then it's available in your app store and play store then this is what the users are going to look now since our prototyping is a, this is our second step of high fidelity now we move into prototyping prototyping is basically that you connect like if i click on next i'm supposed to go to this page so this is prototyping how a user is going to interact with the following design for photo typing figma is, figma has everything you can design also in figma and you can prototype also in figma so in the right side right panel you see prototype we click on prototype now you, what i want to prototype is that when i click on next button it should take me to this page simple i'm going to click on next i see this plus sign i'm going to hold it drag it to the next page that's it now we have more options also now what do you want like i can click on image on click it will take me or when i hover on next it is going to take me to the next page when i'm pressing it or when i'm pressing the right right key in my keyboard or a left key so these are all the animations and you have to look that what is the best animation that is going to look for your user so right now we are going to choose that on click when we click on next it will be taking us to the new page now to view that yes this has actually happened we are going to click on this preview button which is here present you just click on it it will show you the first screen just a second so this is your prototyping now as we have seen before if i click on next it will take me to the next page this is what we prototype if i am a user and this is the first screen that i am seeing if i click on next i should go to the next page and we have already done the prototyping so you see that you don't see a hand anywhere here but if you go to that particular button you see a hand so when i click on next i go to the next page this is what prototyping is and once the prototyping is final this particular design is gone to a developer he codes the following like everything he codes and then the user is experiencing it to test this we also send this prototyping file to our users we tell them to interact with the design and tell us what is wrong what is easier and where they are facing the difficulties so this is how we are saving a lot of time a lot of money in a company now since it's 2021 and like we have some upcoming trends in ui ux so first is that typography you have to be very careful about typography and what kind of fonts you are using in your particular design is it visible to the user is it fitting to your theme if not why is it not fitting which other fonts do you use we have a lot of fonts some are mentioned here the most famous are roboto times square roman you use it in your ms word also because they are like very famous now we have two types of typography sans serif and serif sans serif is a simple font and you see the difference we have always a slanting line you see n 
you always have a slanting line this indicates that you know if you want to uh, convey something very strong a strong meaning or something we go for serif fonts but if you want to portray some very light message or something very soft we usually prefer sans serifs second is using the big images big images is some another trend which we are following these days so i'm going to redirect you to my portfolio to show you this this is my portfolio it's on behance it's a online platform where you can create your portfolio and people are going to look and they can even hire you for your work so if i open this project see half of our image it's just the image and a particular text we are covering up half of our phone screen with the image and sometimes even we cover a full screen the same we did with our prototyping we are covering half of our screen with the image as you see here so this is a trend which is becoming less of text and more of image because image speaks a thousand words as everyone knows second is animations uh, you see if you go to any particular phone or you go to any website you see a lot of animation everything is done in adobe xd and figma i'll show you example of animation as well all this is done in adobe xd and figma you can i'll share you my link you can have a look about the work and if you have any doubt how to do you can contact me anytime on behance itself if we want to see what animations are now this is a hair grooming app that usually iphones use to stare your bitmojis so what will happen if i'll click on the hair it is going to change all these are animations which are done in adobe xd and figma if i want long hair i can change them so all these are animations which because of which the users are you know very interacting with the apps and you enjoy doing it same is happening here and animation is also a very good field to start your career if you are not interested in coding they pay you a very good sum of money and it's a very good field to opt for all these are animations what will happen how user will interact how your icons are going to move you can go through this you can have a look you can see one more animation it is also done in adobe xd if i click on this is a just a you know card so all these are animations you see the this thing is going down how it is turning all this is an animation and right now in 2020 animations are trending second is neomorphism neomorphisms are a simple design which is inspired by your phone calculator they are simple and sophisticated so people are actually moving through neomorphisms because it has a very light appearance they are very soft not very hard to use for the particular user that is using second we have glass morphism glass morphism we use layer styling in which uh, we have a background and everything that is above that background has a blur on it all this is called glass morphism it just looks like a glass if you see a crooked glass it just looks like that so this is also trending in 2021 lot of big companies they are going through it if you have a look at very good apps they use new morphism especially the trending apps like the new technology apps second is illustration illustration is the most common most common things to be used in ui 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 ux and they give a sense of story they tell you a story that what is happening how it is happening and you can also create illustration in adobe illustrator it is a application provided by adobe and before i would like to suggest that if you are planning your career in designing first you should go through adobe softwares that is you know you should learn graphic designing first because you'll have an idea of what how typography is used what fonts are used how to align a particular object start with basic designing of a instagram post you can directly jump into ui ux 
but it's just a suggestion if anyone is looking for a ui ux and when it comes into user experience we are just testing the user because at the end you are going to sell anything you make to your users so you do a lot of market research what your user wants and where he's lagging what he wants and how is going to interact you do all of all the particular research over it and then you make a particular design so that you are not wasting a lot of time you are not mis- wasting your money and the user is also happy and he is using your products again and again so i think um, that was all from my side if anyone has any like questions or anything they can ask me very good actually it was you know you presented you know by following the concepts of uh, ui and user experience your presentation itself was uh, based out of that uh, concept i think uh, it's uh, very essential that uh, no matter what uh, systems you design no matter what business workflow you design there has to be consideration given to the user experience and uh, at rainbow secure also it's our main motto to provide a better security with user experience that's where uh, i think uh, focus should be whether you are providing an endpoint monitoring solution or you are providing uh, risk analytics or you are providing a login authentication if you don't do it in the right way then users uh, will feel stressed they will get bored or they may feel st- uh, you know uh, like they may try to take shortcuts uh, you know around it so i think uh, you are right on the point that uh, anybody who is uh, you know wanting to contribute uh, in any way to the digital transformation story or even for the cyber security they should uh, also learn you know few things about uh, user experience and they can help so here we can uh, you know invite anybody who wants to learn more about this they can reach you out and also you know they can contact rainbow secure as well we'll help you facilitate that and have somebody you know help uh, you know us also design a better you know ux friendly platform for our community and for our audience so anybody here who have any questions want to ask to priya i have shared my behance link if anyone wants to go through it they are please most welcome and you can message me on behance itself i'm online uh, like i'm 24/7 online there and also if you are looking for a career option in designing like you can learn there are a lot of tutorials in youtube like may google your friend like literally google has everything i haven't taken any coaching i haven't done anything it's all google and self learning and a little bit motivation from my seniors and mentors so yeah, just nice. learn from google from you with you and if you want to get an internship to get a proper experience then you can go for internship and also we have work india work india internship are the two platform they're going to give you a paid internship you can learn a lot from there if you are here yeah definitely you can share this details and we can share with the audience as well so you know they can get motivated they can get any help any resources you know you can definitely share with us here on the feed or on the uh, you know event chat so i have question for priya so yes, which platform you are using and where did you get it like if okay. i want to use this same platform that you have so where okay. can i get that okay figma is basically a online platform all you can do is go to google and search figma figma it's a free tool only some of the fun- uh, functionalities are paid so it's a free tool anyone can go and explore and all the plugins which are there in figma are free of cost you don't have to pay a single penny to you know work on them and even you can make teams if you are one of the user and i'm one we both can work together in figma on the same particular application so, is it a difference like uh, what's the difference is like a canva and adobe Um, okay ma'am canva and adobe are basically the tools in which you make creatives like you make slides and instagram posts you it's just the visual representation you can't interact with it 
but figma is basically a prototyping tool you can interact with the designs you can let your users interact more than two more than five people can work into it together so this is a ui tool like you can interact into it but photoshop canva they are the designing tool graphic designers mostly use well, mostly use photoshop so and you say this one is help you to design front end Yes. And uh, like, if some developer wants to convert this design into their content, how they can? Yeah. Like, is there any tool that will help you generate uh, screens or uh, HTML pages for based on this uh, graphics you created? Can, you can't write a code in these tools. They are just for your visual representation. No, no. Is there other tools that uh, feeds on the Figma and they... Because sometimes they have some partners who can mm -hmm. provide similar kind of uh, like a tool so they can have this. Yeah. Like for example, you just mentioned the glass-based theme or you just yeah, mentioned... All the these all theme. are done in Adobe, uh, Adobe mm -hmm. XD and Figma mm -hmm. itself because they are providing the functionality. Mm -hmm. like we are using this tool because it's going to take less time. You can do the same thing in Adobe, but it's not a preferred platform to design a UI because there you have to adjust everything and it's going to take a lot of time. When, like That's why Figma and Adobe are going to take less time. They have all the functionality and you have very limited tools. Like As you see, we have just five to six on our top bar and everything is done with them only. But if you go to Adobe Photoshop, you have like 50 here and 40 here. So that's why this, these tools are made to make your work easy and simple. Right, right. OK, so before we get any confirmation from a client, you just design this prototype yeah. and get them to approve. Then you can. Then they can, I think, uh, use the tools. tools. Yeah, like uh, HTML5 yes. or .NET or Java. People can continue. Yes. Then you can tools. convert it yes. into any programming language in the world. But once the user is happy with the interface, the interaction of the, you're going to save a lot of time and money also mm -hmm. here. Yes, yes. I think it's a very nice uh, presentation and nice uh, idea that you know UX should be given a thought. Now, uh, this will be an like, assignment for the students attending here is that find a way to convert this beautiful design into your code in much easier way. The way easier <laughs> you design it. Now, it's a challenge for your uh, people attending like Siti or <laughs> Pujan or anybody else here. Hey, find a way to convert uh, you know, the UX uh, that you design in Figma into uh, the HTML5 websites or HTML uh, or .NET based web applications. So I think we can have that as an, uh, some kind of session topic uh, in future. Thank yes. you, Priya. Thank you, Priya. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to add something. Mm -hmm. oh, she? I think she left. No, 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 she's here. No, no, I'm here. You want to like ask a question? Yeah, yeah. No, I just, I just want to, I like, I just want to give a feedback. It was like very nice, very informative, and I, I actually thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it because it was like really creative. So mm -hmm. it's like I really enjoyed it. And if Thank someone you. wants to join and say something about Priya, please raise your hand so I can invite you on a stage. Like if anyone has any question, okay. Shashi ma'am is asking from where to start. Uh, so ma'am, basically I would recommend that you should first learn graphic designing. That is basic Adobe Photoshop and Canva because you're going to learn a lot about typography, how to align, how to set an image. You are going to learn about user that if I have a post on Instagram for how long the user is interacting with that particular post. But yes, you can directly jump to UI UX. But it's very important to clear your fundamentals first to jump into a higher level of designing. And you can have, like there are a lot of resources on YouTube. You can just write UI courses and you'll have like thousands of videos and playlists and you can like view any. Like it's the concept is same. You don't need any coding. 
so it's very easy to learn it's just like how you are presenting your thoughts into a particular design very nice very nice i like the way you started the presentation by invoking the audience uh, from the first slide itself by asking about the ketchup bottle thank you sir <laughs> so uh this the, like already our session is going more and more long instead of uh, getting so much weight let's meet in a launch and have some one on one networking opportunity so what we do like uh, once you go in a launch join a table where we are there and you can meet us or if you want to do some speed networking just click on that okay bye thank so you so thank you shakti ma'am thank you eva thank you dava to join here thank you priya thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you rehal